I'm ready. Hey, everybody. Welcome to IGEL Weekly, episode number 77, here on the day after uh, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. I heard a joke the other day about May the 5th now, but I can't remember. It's something to do with Mandalorian. Um, and I know it's somebody who listens to this podcast actually made the joke, so I'm going to ask them to chime in in the comments because <laughs> I'm drawing a complete blank right now. <laughs> Um, anyway, I, I'm Barry Brown um, from Zetegra, and with me as always is my partner in crime, uh, Sebastian Prusa. I think I got, I pronounced it correctly. That's perfect. For, for once. <laughs> uh, so Seb, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you since since Disrupt. You made it home safe and sound? Yeah, true. Uh, last time we met in Nashville. First time we met, and last time we met was in Nashville. Uh, yeah, doing fine. Had a safe trip home. Uh, we just had a little bit of trouble regarding uh, the thunderstorm, which took over Nashville for a couple of days. So my initial flight was delayed for one day, but no big deal, to be honest. I was happy to reach my home and, uh, yeah, back in business now. So your flight was delayed a full day getting out of Nashville? Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, to, to be honest, I would have been able to take another flight, but inside of the US. But from there, I wouldn't have been able to travel back to Germany. So I said, okay, why spending my time then somewhere else? I just prefer to stay in the hotel, having my, my, my own room and don't have to, uh, to to pack my things. So yes, it was more or less one day that I lost there. I mean, oh, okay. it, it wasn't really losing something. So I was happy to see you guys, but uh, it was one day less where I could have been home. Yeah, correct. Uh, so it's one of those things you're happy to see us, but you're also happy to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That's so kind of like when I when I bring my kids to see my parents, their grandparents. That my grandparents love to see them coming, but they're also happy to, when they leave so that they can clean up the mess that the kids make. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of yeah, curiosity, you're you from, quite good. <laughs> you went from Nashville to London. To where you are? Is that the route you take? Uh, no, 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 no. So I would have usually have taken the plane from Nashville to Washington, D.C. and from Washington, if I remember right, then back to Frankfurt. And yeah, apparently only this specific flight connection was, was in trouble because all of my other colleagues who flew through London hadn't uh, any issues. So it was just, I guess, my connection flight, which was a little bit broken. But yeah, I mean... It wasn't a big deal. I was happy to be there, and uh, I'm ready to rock the Discord show again. I mean, I'm happy to have maybe our kind of a road to happening this year. I can't tell if something something like this is planning, uh, but after Disrupt is already before the next Disrupt, so I hope we'll have a kind of road show this year. Well, yeah, because uh, at uh, the, the podcast we did live from Nashville, Ir Irfan hinted that there'd be there'd be kind of some road shows going on, and uh, yeah, you know, I don't think we're going to get we're going to deep dive into that today, but it's a it's a hint for what to expect. Um, you know, I think. Um, from the IGEL side, I think we're still going to have the main two big disrupt pod or disrupt uh, yeah. conferences and a number of smaller roadshows uh, across the world. Is that fair to say, Seb? Yeah, more or less. I would say at least in our main uh, main area, so in North America and Europe. Uh, even in Europe, we didn't cross a lot of borders. To be honest, uh, we stayed mostly in our say hometowns like the Netherlands, uh, we had in Germany, in Switzerland, and in the Nordics and Austria. So, I mean, for US uh, sizes, we are more or less staying in the same state, but in Europe, it means we cross different borders. And that's what I hope to see too this year, again, that we have a big show in Munich and in Nashville, and in the second step, traveling a little bit around and see the people because not everyone could join this event. And we have to share so much information about our new product. I mean, it's not a huge thing that we are uh, have uh, launched uh, Agile Cosmos or our new Agile UMS 12, ICG 12 and OS 12 a couple of days ago. So everyone, I guess, who is listening to the podcast is already aware of it. But this product needs a little bit of awareness. And that's where I'm looking, really looking forward to be on site again. And that's, by the way, also one reason why I'm in Berlin right now. But I can tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Okay, well, let's, let's unpack everything you just said there, because you're you're obviously not in your, your home with your fancy microphone and the whole works, but you still sound good. So you're in a hotel room in Berlin. Is that where you are? Yes, that's absolutely correct. And you're there for what? So we have, uh, I mean, we have, um, Alex Cooper is uh, holding an E2E conference since 20 years now. So I'm happy to be there for the 20th anniversary. 
um, which is happening around the world, but mostly in uh, in Europe, but also partially in South Africa and Japan. So it's a conference where all the masterminds of the end user computing space, minus myself, are attending <laughs> and exchanging. I mean, the real mastermind are there. I'm just there to to, to look at them um, and sharing technical content. So. We have sponsors like we had Agile. In that case, we're not a sponsor that year, but we were in the past. Uh, we have people like Control Up, like Flexible there, and sharing tech content. So we are not speaking about marketing stuff, um, how great a product is or which message they want to deliver. No, they're really talking about bits and bytes. So how to install the solution, how to configure things, um, how to get uh, the best experience out of your Citrix environment. So really tech people talking to tech people. No be star 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 shit so um, you start the wrong things <laughs> i know i know <laughs> so that's exactly what i mean i mean it, it, you're really talking tech and that's one part is what is happening to be a, during the day so i mean obviously I'm, right now i'm in my room but um i would go back to the conference in a second after our podcast um, you're talking to a lot of people coming from different countries of europe partially worldwide and then in the afternoon, in the evening time, you're networking because, I mean, we're all working for money. We're all working for business, right? But we all still have a private life somewhere. And that's where the things are getting even more interesting. I mean, we're talking still talking tech, um, but we're talking about, hey, last holidays, uh, hobbies, family. And, and that's what I'm really loving in such kind of conference, not only the tech, but also the private approach. Right. It, it sounds. It reminds me a lot. You just your description about the uh, the EUC Masters retreat that happened just before disrupt in. Yeah. Yeah. I want to exactly. Say yeah. Same approach. Okay. So that sounds like a phenomenal event that I'm going to try and finagle my way into next year. The EUC Masters retreat, and uh, maybe, maybe if the if uh, if things go well, I might actually end up in Germany too, and and uh, at disrupt next year. But who knows? Who knows? Um, I have to put in a good word with, with Andy because I know he listens to these things. So Andy, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Let's go to Germany. <laughs> We could definitely so, start a big road trip inside of Germany, I mean, inside of Europe. Well, uh, I want to go on the Autobahn. Since... That's, that's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be honest, ask Germans about the Autobahn. Everyone's excited if you're not living in Germany about the Autobahn. But if you live in Germany, car stockings, uh, reparations, it's just a nightmare. Because what you think that we can drive as fast as we want everywhere is a lie. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> Sometimes we are happy to drive about 20 to 30 miles per hour because everything is stocking so it's a it's a great approach but honestly you would not be able to run that fast so i don't, I don't have to worry about my little mazda 3 breaking down going 140 miles an hour i'm never going to get that fast okay uh yeah you could you could maybe on some portions but uh you have to think about it it's not everywhere right so you just have specific portions of our autobahn which is free of speed limit um, I would say roughly, just my personal feeling, 30 to 40 persons of our autobahn are not speed limited. But there you have so much car traffic that you cannot even drive that fast. So it's it, it's a great picture to have in mind, but it's not as great as you would imagine. Okay. Um, just before we change topics on to yeah, what Please. we should be talking about, what does autobahn mean something or does it just mean like highway in English? It just means a translated car highway. Okay, so bond is highway? Yeah, exactly. And okay. auto is uh, the car. So it, it translated even more, it would mean uh, a, a car way. That's exactly the translation, but highway would be the uh, the autobahn. Correct. All right. And that concludes our, our new segment of the podcast where Seb teaches Barry German. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to do so. We can, and then we can also sp switch to friends because I know that you have also a lot of friends uh, uh, speaking French speaking people inside of, of Canada. So we can maybe switch to that one afterwards. Yeah, I'm afraid the only German I know is Audubon and some bad words. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, ch change the gears real quick. Let's 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 talk about disrupt. You know, we obviously had hundreds, through hundreds, and maybe thousands of people come to Nashville for the event. Um, yeah. You know, it was a really it was a really exciting event. It was a lot of buzz. You know. Um, Cosmos wasn't quite ready for prime time, so it didn't go GH during the conference. Um, Correct. But it did come out uh, May 18th, or excuse me, April 18th, which is a couple weeks ago now. But looking back at the conference, you know, what was your kind of, you know, takeaway from the event, you know, in terms of, you know, the networking, the the, the sessions, you know, the the activities that were planned for the attendees? You know, personally, I thought that it was a phenomenal event. It's, it's certainly becoming the premier EUC event now that... Um, Things like uh, Synergy are gone away and probably not making a return. So I only see, you know, the Agile Disrupt Conference getting bigger and bigger. 
Um, and Agile is becoming um, such an important piece of the overall EUC um, ecosystem um, that it's just natural for to, to to grow. So I'm curious to hear what you think about the event and you know what your takeaways were. Uh, first thing that I noticed is that everyone's looking different from what I expected uh, in, in our Zoom calls. That's the first thing. I mean, beside that fact, which is also relying to uh, to networking, uh, I was impressed. I mean, obviously it was, uh, <clears throat> sorry, for me it was the second time in the US um, and everything was was bigger than expected. I mean, the rooms were bigger. Um, the audience was, was amazing, was just huge. And I'm not speaking about the hotel. The hotel is, is a topic for itself. So we'll just keep it as it is. Uh, but the, the conference itself, I, I must say, I, I was surprised to see how good it was organized because, I mean, it was a long time ago when we had the last conference um, before COVID. And I was surprised to see that even if there was a long time in between and uh, we had behind the scenes a little bit of struggling, at the end, at least from my view, uh, because I was also an attendee as you, uh, as you were, it went pretty good. I mean, besides the small room that we had for our podcast, but that's another topic. We don't have to <laughs> tell that in, in our podcast right now. Uh, it was it was a success, and um, it was interesting to see also which kind of cultural cultural difference we have in terms of interacting with each other. So, uh, I would say the human the human part of the event was the most important one for me. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. You know, I met people, well, I met you for the first time in person. Uh, yeah, true. But I also met, you know, a number of people from the community, like David Prowse I'd met before, uh, Renee, Doug Brown. Uh, I met sure. some of my colleagues from India who came over. So it was a phenomenal networking event. And, you know, I'm kind of guilty. I got to about five minutes worth of sessions. And one of the sessions was was yours, actually. And then you did a phenomenal job in a really hot room. So uh, so kudos to you. Thank to keep you. It cool Because it was it, it was a thousand degrees in that room. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. I mean, it was great to have you people join because we are not doing such kind of conferences for Agile employees, right? We're doing that for you guys. We are doing that for people joining, for people being excited to use our solution. And as I'm always telling, I'm a technical person. So I'm not saying that the Agile solution is the only in the world and we're doing everything perfectly. No, we have some, uh, some situation where we have to teach people how to use, how to best make the best use out of our, of our ecosystem. Uh, because our our project is still quite complex. I mean, it's not so it's not something that you install, click, 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 and then you're ready to go for ten thousand devices. No, you still have some bits and bytes you have to adapt. And seeing you, seeing the Azure community inside of the Azure community members in general, is something which is priceless. And then having the ability to teach and to talk to each other um, in person is something that I couldn't be happier. Um, to have that on that event. And that's the reason why we are there, telling you, speaking to you, but mostly I would say listening to you is something that I'm taking other takeover from uh, from every event, not talking that much, listening, understanding where your needs are, uh, what you are missing, what you are liking, uh, what we can do even better. And that's something where, I, I don't know how much the event has cost to be honest, but it was, <laughs> a couple of bucks, I guess, uh, but it's definitely worth the money every time, every time. Yeah, no, I agree with that 100%. You know, it's, you know, like you said, it, it's not an expensive or not an inexpensive event to put on, but to bring the community together to 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 understand, you know, where IGL is going, to understand the, the new products that are coming out, the the roadmap items, it's invaluable to be there and to share those those conversations, you know, over a cup of coffee or a beer or or you know just the hallway chatter it's it's phenomenal and it's uh, in my mind from from the partner side it's it's money well spent um it's my first time attending a conference from the partner side and i have to tell you it's a whole lot different than uh, going oh, as true. a quote unquote as an attendee uh, which is why i only got you know 5 10 minutes in a session the rest of it was was true. filled with uh, with with partner meetings with you know customer meetings um but i, I wouldn't change a thing it was an absolute blast i had a, I had a brilliant time um and I, I gave the feedback all through to anybody from IGL who I met at the event. I said, look, you guys, uh, you bang us out of the park. There's a couple of minor hiccups, but nothing, nothing deal breaking. But uh, I think the world, word around the street was that a really well executed event, um, not just from a logistics perspective, from a, from a, from a technology perspective, from a, a, a knowledge transfer perspective, uh, really well done. So kudos to the, uh, to the team at IGL who managed to, uh, oh, yeah. to pull it off. Really so, glad to hear that. Thank you very much for that feedback. So let's, let's change gears. So, Disrupt sure. is in our rearview mirror, uh, but Cosmos is is front and center. Um, 
So there was a number of events or a number of sessions in, in during the keynote about, uh, you know, what is Cosmos, the new features of Cosmos, you know, UMS 12, Agile OS 12, ICG 12, is that what we're calling it? ICG 12? Yeah, okay. ICG 12. Um, so out of all the new technologies that we're seeing as part of the Cosmos platform, uh, to you, Seb, what is, what is the best feature, if you were talking to a customer today, that would sell them on, on Cosmos versus, um, versus OS 11 and UMS 6? I would be happy to say that I could just tell one, but I have a couple of them. So uh, I would to, to still try to keep it to keep it short. But in my view, is to going away from our monolithic firmware to a modular firmware approach. I'm saying that because I'm working with the Azure solution since oh my god, 20 years. Oh god, I'm getting <laughs> old. Yeah, 20 years. Damn it! Wow. Okay, shouldn't have said not, that. Not as old as me, Seb. Not as old as me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, I'm just making some math in my head, but yeah, it could be 20 years. And it was more or less always deploying all the features set from the beginning on and disabling stuff that you don't want to use, which is, like I'm always saying, a quite German approach, right? So having a Swiss knife, putting everything together, and you have to pick whatever you want to use. On OS 12, you don't have that anymore. You have a base OS, which is basically what you would have if you would install with some uh, difference, obviously, but if you would install an Ubuntu on your box and then starting to install Citrix Workspace app or Horizon client and so on in the web browser. In that case, we're doing the same, but in our secured way. So you just apply a, an application, a profile, and boom, that's it. Everything is happening behind the scenes in a couple of seconds, maybe a minute from time to time. So. If you ask me, modular firmware is my highlight inside of our Azure OS 12 thing. So, so for just to expand on your comments here a moment, so Please. what we're doing, or I say we, but what Agile is doing is, is getting away from the concept of firmware, but delivering an, a, a, an operating system as an application and only installing the needed pieces um, yeah. for your environment. So for example, if I'm a Citrix shop, I install the OS 12 application, and only Citrix Workspace app plus the various dependencies. What that means is the time to deploy the operating system, the deploy, time to deploy the Workspace app is, is decreased dramatically. Um, I installed OS 12 on a, on a VM in my home lab here, and um, just say OS 11 took eight minutes, uh, OS 12 took three and a half. Um, yeah. So that, that's one thing, the easy deployment is, is greatly reduced and um, the time to deployment is greatly reduced. Um, and so, from a, from a security perspective, it's a much a much uh, much sounder play in terms of if I'm only installing Citrix bits, I only have to secure the Citrix bits. If I'm not using VMware, I don't have to worry about that. If I'm not using uh, Improvada, I don't have to worry about that because it's not actually installed in the base OS anymore, which is a which is a game changer. So super light OS, super secure OS, and only the bits and pieces we need to actually um, run our business are actually installed. So the concept of the app portal, which we haven't really touched on just yet, is is a, a game changer. Um, that, yeah, exactly. I mean, you just nailed it. Um, we we made a lot of uh, of work in, in in making this app portal, which is app.azure.com. So you can access it even now if you want to, and look at what we have at the moment at the as an application uh, inside of it. So it's nothing which is behind in uh, login or something like that. Just go to their website, check which apps we have. Um, search for it, and you will see that we have already, I would say, the most valued app are already there. I know we are missing some parts, so just for our listeners, the question was asked a couple of times already also in the Azure community. Like an example, RDP is not there. That's true. Um, we are working on it. We had to make a choice. Uh, which are kind of applications do we want to have from the beginning on? Um, what would be a most valued app in a second step? So we really focused on our main market. That doesn't mean that we are ignoring the market or, um, or or ADP. It just meant that we looked in what our customers are using and they're mostly using uh, AVD, Horizon, Citrix, and so on, and web browser, obviously. That's the reason why we focus on them. But um, we have also uh, the smart card authentication stuff. If you think back about what we had in the past, we had every library for um, uh, for more or less every smart card engine on the world in our operating system. Does it have to be this way? No. You can choose, hey, am I using a safe sign or point sharp or NXP, cryptos, whatever you like, ID protect uh, library. You choose. 
And even if you say that you're not interested in getting, I don't know, a media player, because yeah, why do we? Have, why should you have a media player on your local Azure OS if you're using Citrix? Absolutely correct. Then just don't use it. Just don't don't deploy it, or just deploy it where you need it. And that's where we are making a huge difference at the moment. And should I say, finally? <laughs> so, so I asked you what your favorite feature is. So I'm going to turn the table and say, hey Barry, what's your favorite feature? And mine. Without a doubt, is OBS. So OBS is the onboarding yeah. service from I from Igel. And so they, when I first saw this at, at Disrupt, I, I was like, oh, okay, that looks fine on stage, but let's see. So OBS as a concept essentially means you know you you ship out an Igel device to a remote employee, you know, in Kansas, Wichita, or Wichita, Kansas, in, and they can they unbox the device, they pop it on their desk, they connect the peripherals, connect the network, and boot it up. Um, as part of the the process of of uh, Going through the wizard, I suppose. So the the, the customer at the end at the end user is uh, prompted for I think it's four different uh, uh, screens. First thing they have to do is set their time. Second thing is enter their corporate um, email address. Uh, third thing is their uh, corporate password, and the fourth is MFA if needed. And um, what automatically happens behind the scenes is the uh, the device is automatically registered with with uh, UMS twelve. It's all automatically placed in a in a in a folder or directory yep. within UMS, and the audit appointment rules kick in. Where you know, if we know uh, Barry Brown at Integra.com works in finance, I get dropped into the finance folder, and all my finance applications are provisioned for me on the fly. Um, so all that looked like magic when I first saw it. Um, what was even more magical about it was that they actually ran a disrupt on the keynote. They ran it uh, with a stopwatch, and they did it just yep. just shy just shy of three minutes. And I and in my head, I'm thinking, yeah, no way. No way. This is, this is some some voodoo going on behind the scenes. So when I got home from the truck, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually did it at home, and I got it done in two minutes and forty seconds. So it's uh, you can actually <laughs> deploy, um, deploy is the wrong words. You can onboard a, an employee uh, to Igel OS to UMS twelve in sub three minutes, and that's the real deal. From a from a technologist guy, not a marketing guy, um, it actually works as as advertised. So I, I was blown away by that. And you know, with the, with us kind of coming out coming out of the, the tail end of the pandemic, um, you know, that doesn't mean hybrid work is going away, remote work is going away. People still uh, will be doing that into the future, and that's a fantastic way to onboard people. Drop ship a Lenovo, drop ship an LG device with Igel OS preloaded. Uh, user enters the username, password, MFA if needed, and uh, they're productive within you know, within a few minutes. So that was a that's a game changing technology. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, especially if you think about the approach that we introduced. I mean, it's, it's going hand in hand in your favorite feature, to be honest. Um, I mean, we talked about the monolithic firmware approach that we uh, just uh, thrown away. You spoke about the OBS service, which is also hand in hand with the, the registration process. We redesigned the whole communication stack. So um, if you think back about where we are coming from, we are coming from TCP 30001, 30005, 8443, then specific port for scanning the device by UDP in that case. At the moment, you, you can still use part of them for OS 11, but for OS 12, we redesigned the whole communication stack. So we are just using what we call the unified protocol, which is based on a WebSocket communication as we did on ICG in former times and still do on, on Azure OS 11. Um, but in that case, the UMS is not talking that much anymore. It just communicates when it needs to. And that also uh, decreased the amount of network traffic that we are using for talking to our devices. And in addition, it makes it even more secure. It makes it even easier because you don't have to think about a range of ports that you have to consider. No, just concentrate on one specific port and that's it. That's why the unified protocol combined with the OBS um, doesn't make the need anymore to use an ICG. You can still use an Azure Cloud Gateway or a connector between the outside world and your UMS. You can, it's still allowed to do so, but you don't need it anymore because in former time it was required. If you wanted to use a device from outside, like from a teleworker or uh, in a branch office without a VPN, you couldn't manage the device actively by not having an ICG. In that case, just use our new unified protocol and you're good to go. Okay, so I'd be at a, I'd be doing myself a disservice if I didn't mention this. So what everything you just said there said was was uh, was very technical, very complex. So last when was it? It was last week. No, sorry, excuse me. Two weeks ago, I was in in Charlotte at Integra HQ where we brought in uh, Ed Webster, we brought in Chris Feeney, we brought in Ron Neer, yeah. and uh, some of the smartest guys in the industry. And they actually yeah. 
um, helped us build out um, uh, in learning training for for Cosmos specifically. Um, so we did that for a couple of days. We, we you know we all sat together as a group. We brainstormed. You know what does this look like to deliver in person training for the first time for IGEL? And um, what we did on on Wednesday Thursday, I guess it was, is actually we brought in some some customers, some Dagger customers. Uh, into our offices and we set them down and we trained them for two days. So myself, uh, Ray and and Donovan from Zintegra, we delivered in-person training to real customers on Cosmos. Um, and That's cool. This, yeah, and after after we completed the, the actual training, um, we left the room, they sat there, they wrote the Cosmos certification exam. And uh, the, let's just say the, the, the pass rate was extremely, extremely high. And so we're, we're thrilled with that. So Going back to your points about the the complexities of the product, if anybody's looking for you know some help, some assistance with the training, with uh, you know moving from OS eleven to OS twelve, um, you know I sent my email earlier in the podcast, but I'm sure you can get hold of anybody from our friends uh, in uh, the sales office at, at Integra. We'll we'll come on site and we'll we'll help you out, you know, essentially for free, um, just to get that training, get you to get that knowledge transfer, and get you upgraded if if need be. Um, anyway, cheap plug. You started with talk about technical stuff. I want to I want to talk about training for a second, so we've done that. Um, so still on the Cosmos conversation, so OS 11, we kind of saw releases happening every month, every two months um, to the base, um, the old, what we call the old firmware. If Any thoughts on what we should expect now where, where we no, no longer have a big monolithic firmware, we have a, a very light operating system, very light um, packages. What does that look like in, in the future in terms of upgrades? So... Speaking about OS 11, um, just want to mention one thing. And as always, if something new is coming up, we always speak about the new stuff, but we seems to forget the old stuff. So OS 11 is still a product that a lot of customers are using, right? So um, not everyone can or will upgrade from OS 11 to OS 12 from the beginning and on. And I totally get it, right? So um, even if Windows is uh, starting a new operating system, I'm not installing it in productive environment from the beginning on, right? I'm, I'm testing a lot and checking if the first version is working like I would expect, wait for the first update and then wait and check again. So for the moment, for users who are using OS 11, more or less nothing changed, right? We have our rolling releases, which are delivered on a regular base. We are trying to keep it um, as rolling. So every, I would say every month, every two months, there's a new version, including uh, new components, new drivers, and a fully quality assurance process, which is fulfilled. At the same time, we set up our, our private builds, which if you're not part of the Agile community, go to agilecommunity.com, register there, and come back to the channel, which is called New Product Releases, where we are sharing the latest private builds. Private builds are software uh, software versions, firmwares, which are not delivered to the whole market uh, because they are just covering one use case, one specific Citrix workspace app update, and so on, and which are fully supported, but not went through the whole quality assurance process. So closing that guarantee again. Um, that's what we will stay on. We have, uh, I would have to lie, but 2025 is uh, the date that I remember for uh, for OS 11. Mm -hmm. um, and from there on, we are focusing on uh, on OS on, on OS 12. That means that if Citrix is bringing out a new Citrix workspace app, we, as Hydro for the moment, have to cover two versions. So we have to cover the Hydro OS 11 version and the OS 12. The app approved that we have in OS 12 cannot be deployed to OS 11. So we have, for that moment, uh, let's say a parallel way of managing our devices. One hand OS 11, old way profiles, deploy firmware, update the whole firmware and be happy again. On OS 12, importing an app update and deploying that app update. And that's something where I can encourage everyone who is listening to update to your OS 12. I must say until now, it's pretty stable. Um, it just makes a start. Fire up a virtual machine or a test device with, with OS 12. I must say that there is no upgrade path for the moment from OS 11 to OS 12. It will come. It will come soon as you think, but it's not there at the moment. So you can't upgrade, update from OS 11 to OS 12 directly. You have to refresh the device by using the OSC. Just an information for, for you guys. Uh, but just makes a start. Test a little bit with OS 12 and you will see the OS 12 is not only a new communication platform, it's not only a new app deployment tool. You will see that the whole graphical user interface changed also. Mm -hmm. And I can just tell you one thing, the notification area is something that you will love, I promise. I will not tell too much about that, just test it, please. 
Right. And it's, it's worth mentioning, um, UMS 12 can manage both OS 12 and OS 11 devices. So, you know, there's no reason not to get on with building out a UMS 12 environment and, you know, either migrating or reflashing or whatever you need to do to your devices to either keep them on 11, move them 12 just from the management perspective, or take the, take, you know, through you, a, a test group or, or UAT group, upgrade those guys to 12 and uh, move them over and um, see how things go. It's also worth mentioning from a, you know, Seb, you and I are technology guys. So the last thing we want to do is talk about licensing. Um, but if you are of active, um, I just don't, uh, what do they call it, subscription or maintenance, subscription is the right word, actually. If you have act yeah. active subscription, you're entitled to OS 12 with no additional cost. Um, for those folks who are still on perpetual licensing, um, I'm afraid it's a, it's a different story. Um, I don't think there's direct access to 12, um, but that's a, that's a conversation for your Agile sales team, uh, exactly. not, for, not for the geeks on this call. <laughs> 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 but if you are uh, already part of the Agile community and you want to test it, just go to our community minus NFR section of our Slack client. And inside of the Azure community, you have a freshly new issued license from yesterday. Uh, so you can use that in a specific uh, virtual machine with a specific MAC address. And you can test our solution uh, without having the need to buy anything, right? So just in case someone is wanting to test, just go to azurecommunity.com, register, and get your NFR license from there. Yeah, and it, I actually had a couple of a couple of problems getting that to work, but um, that was completely 100% user error when I was trying to get the the uh, OS 12 MAC address registered correctly yep. with my with my virtual machine. I remember, so, but it, I, I I can't type is what it boils down to. I, I missed a zero. <laughs> I mean, that's really kind of you to say that in a podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm, if I make a mistake, I own up to it 100%. You know, been there, done that. I've been, I've been around the industry too long that if you don't own up to your mistakes. Um, they can come back yeah. and bite you relatively quickly. You're absolutely right. I would do the same. Um, one final thing before we wrap up here, Seb, um, I just wanted to kind of another cheap plug is that um, during, during Disrupt, Zentegra is awarded the Elite Partner of the Year for North America. Um, <laughs> can you tell me what that means? You know, again, I'm a technology guy. That's kind of that's a, an award for the company as a whole. What does that actually mean? <laughs> Can I be absolutely crystal clear and honest? I have no clue. All right. Um, Let me go talk to my marketing guys. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason uh, I really prefer to stay honest. Uh, first of all, there are differences between EMEA and, and the US. And in the second step, I must admit that I'm not involved that much in that process. It's more our channel team, which is taking care of that kind of awards. I mean, I can tell you, uh, I can speak hours about our Agile Insider VIP and Member of the Year awards, but I must admit that the channel one, I'm, I mean, I was proud to see that uh, Xentegar is there, but I cannot tell if you are getting a Porsche out of it or a 10,000 bucks uh, Amazon uh, voucher. It might be, I'm not saying it's impossible, but- no, I, uh, I got a high five, I got a high five out of it. And a, and a picture. <laughs> that should be enough then. It is. I'm a happy man. I'm a happy man. Um, okay, Seb, I'm, we're running out of time here. We, we started a little bit late due to some uh, some technical issues, and you're on the road, so I think we should wrap things up here um, and let you get off to your, your conference. I'm sure you're missing out on it. It must be getting close to happy hour over there. Yeah, let's call it happy hour. I mean, we call it networking, but there is also a little bit of gin and tonic, obviously. I wouldn't be uh, there with a gin and tonic. Or is it some just some German beer? It must be good beer in uh, in Berlin. Uh, Berliner Weisse. It's a it's a light, really light light beer to drink. That's one of the most famous ones, I would say. Okay, well, when I get there next year, we'll have to have some. What do you call it? Berlin Weisse. Berliner Weisse beer. Yeah. Okay. Good. See, I thought I we already finished the uh, German with with the uh, Seb section. <laughs> I would definitely bring it through. And uh, by the way, all the best from uh, Douglas Brown, She's also there. Uh, I met him yesterday and today. So all the best also to Santega team and our podcast listeners from Douglas Brown, our former IGL employee. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, with that, I'll let you go, Seb. And it was good talking to you. And we'll talk to you again in a couple of weeks. With pleasure. Thank you very much, Barry. See you next all time. Right. Talk soon. Bye-bye.